Turn with me your Bibles to 3 John chapter 1. Begin reading in the first verse. My dear friend Gaius, whom I love in the truth, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy to have some brothers come and tell about your faithfulness to the church, to the truth, and how you continue to walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you today to Allow your word to penetrate our heart, that it would grow and begin to bear fruit in us. Lord, that our vision of what it is you called us to do would be enhanced by your word and by the truth. Lord, I, I pray that the Holy Spirit would guide us into that very truth that will make a difference in our lives. Lord, that, that we not be deceived, that we not be confused, that we not be divided. And Father, I ask you in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the King James, that first or that second verse it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Above all things, I pray that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. You know. I have listened to people preach and use this passage of Scripture and they used it to uh, create a, a vision for themselves that has everything to do with prosperity and nothing to do with truth. I, I believe that God prospers in the certain. I just believe that when the Spirit of God is there and it rests in that place with that person, that there's blessing. There's physical, there's healing, there's spiritual uh, healing, there's there's financial healing, that God works completely and totally in that particular situation because He's there. If you look back to the Old Testament when they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant through and, and it, it was on a cart, they were moving it in an, in an inappropriate manner and it got to a particular place, it was left there while that Ark of the Covenant sat there, there was a blessing upon the individual who housed the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was always... Uh, typically the presence of God. It was the indication of the Shekinah glory of God. It was the dwelling place of God. When the Spirit of God dwells somewhere, there's blessing. I, I was ex uh, exchanging a, a text with a, a person today and they told me that one of the churches here in town that, that we're close to was over $9,000 behind on their mortgage. That they had been given a, an indication that if in the next month that wasn't caught up, they were going to lose their facilities. You know, and I, and I, I said to them, I said, we're, we're, we're trusting God every week, every day for what He blesses us with, but thank God we're, we're paying our bills. Thank God the needs are being met. Now, sometimes I get looks wondering if He's going to meet it again today, but every time God comes in and, and He does a work in our finance and in our life. When the blessing of God is present, you're going to find uh, that, that, that He's going to meet needs in your life. You're going to, to be well and you're going to prosper. That doesn't mean if you're sick, there's something wrong with you spiritually. That doesn't mean that if financially going through a valley, that everything's not in order. I, I don't mean that at all. But I believe if you walk in the truth, if you experience life in the truth, then you will begin to know a peace of God that passes understanding whether you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death or you're not. Amen. Now, I, I, sometimes as, as an individual, I get frustrated uh, trying to minister to people in situations like this child who's passed away and, and the mother of that child in, in dire straits and the family calling for the church. I have no problem going. I'm going and, I, and I'm glad to go. But sometimes... I say, Lord, why does it take this to get them to begin to call out and begin to get involved? And, and, and maybe that's not the case at all, but we, we've been talking about being in church. We've been talking about having a right relationship with God. We've been talking about living and walking in the truth. It is very difficult. It's very difficult to get everything together so that you can meet God on His turf. 
If you wait till you can afford it, if you wait till all the chores are done, if you wait till everything else, that's exactly what you're going to have. You're going to have a relationship that, that is, is, is somehow buried behind everything else. The Bible said, seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then in, in that process, you begin to see the blessing of It's the truth that makes us true. It's the truth that works in us. I, I believe that all of these other things are byproducts of the walk we have with God. That we, we may go through the valley of the shadow of death, but in that time, we have the comfort of the Lord. And I, I believe that, that God will give us that peace and that comfort. He will teach us because of the truth. We don't mourn like everybody else mourns because we know the truth. Yeah, there, there is so many times that we as church people get sidetracked on everything but the truth. And, and as I was preparing for this thing, I, I, I thought, what, what is the truth? What, what truth is it that we ought to hold on to? What is the truth that will separate us and set us apart so that we prosper in health? What is the truth that will make us different than the world? And then the Holy Spirit just began to bring up within my spirit the truth that Jehovah God is an all-sufficient God. The truth is that everything I am and can be and will be is in God. And if it's not in God, it will not be anyplace else. I can never find satisfaction anywhere but in the truth and in the presence and in the person of God. And regardless of where I go and what I run into, when I get there, Jehovah's already there. He knows the circumstance. He's already at work. As, as, as flustered as I am at not knowing how to minister to a grandmother who's lost her grandbaby and, and a daughter who's lying on her deathbed, the, the upset, the upheaval, trying to figure out how do I go in there and bring them the truth. I realize that the truth is in Jehovah God. That the truth is that He will cover them in their hurt and their pain and He will minister to their need because He loves them. And because regardless of what has taken place in the past or, or what's hindered in the past, our God is able to begin right now today anywhere that we allow Him to, He'll begin to minister the truth. I know that the truth is that the Lord Jesus Christ was sent by the Father as the Savior to the world. My Bible says in, in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but would have everlasting life. I know the truth is that He is the Savior of the world. You may look for Him somewhere else. You may look for an answer somewhere else. But the truth still exists that Jesus is the gate whereby we enter and know the presence of Almighty God. The truth is that God our Father, through His Son Jesus, the work that He did on Calvary, is everything that we need to walk in the truth as St. John talked about in this passage. I know the truth is that the sacrifice that Jesus made on Calvary was exactly what was needed for the sin issue in every life in this room. I don't care how frustrated you get with circumstances in your life or how upsetting they may be. I tell you today that the answer in all of that, the truth in all of that, is that the sacrifice Jesus paid on Calvary was sufficient for my sin. From the deepest, darkest thing that I see and know in my life to, to the very least thing in my life. The blood, the shed blood of Jesus is the truth that makes a difference. And whether you're wrestling with something that, that you have no control over, or whether you're wrestling with something that you hold, hold all of the cards, the truth is today that Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, is everything that we need. The truth is that His sinless life was important to every issue in our lives. That He never ever put himself in a place where he was at odds with the Father. And because of that, he stands in purity at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and I. We may not be able to approach the throne in purity except through the blood of Jesus, but the Savior, the sinless Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is there making intercession for you and I. He is there interceding for me. Frustrating as I can be, as aggravating as I can be, the 
Father Himself is hearing the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the sinless one of all the ages, stand and intercede on my behalf. You may not think that the sinless life is important, but I tell you the sinless life is, the virgin birth is important to those things that affect us in our world. There are those who would try to somehow debunk the story of the, the, the virgin birth. But I tell you, He was not conceived in sin as we were conceived in sin. He was birthed of the moving of the Holy Spirit. And He's working in our lives. He offered Himself a sinless sacrifice. And, and, and the more you look at that, the more you focus on that truth, the, the more purely you understand how precious is the work that Jesus did in my life. How many of you can say tonight, Thank you, Jesus, for the perfect, precious work you've done in my life. I don't care if you're 6 or you're 16 or you're 60 or you're 66 or you're 96. The work that Jesus does for us is the truth. It's the truth that takes the weight of all of our sin, all of our history, all of our past, everything we're dealing with today. It takes it and lifts it. That song John sang said, He lifts me high. There's enough depression and heartache and, and division and ugliness in the world that it will destroy everyone if we let it. Amen. But I believe that we declare the truth. We declare the truth about who Jesus is. He is the Messiah. He is the Messiah who came to seek and to save that which is lost. He's come to transform lives. Young people, you want to set yourself apart? You want to be known of men? You want to be seen of men and understood? Let me tell you, set yourself apart as a part of the kingdom of God. You'll find the Holy Spirit anoint you and you'll begin to change lives every day because you set yourself apart. It may not be a priority. I know driver's licenses and, and money and, and, and all college and all these things are important. But the, the, the greatest thing in the world is the Spirit of the living God as it works in our hearts. It's the most precious thing in the world to know the truth about Jesus. All of the things that erupt out of our lives, the anger, the upset, the, 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 the depression, those things that, that affect our lives are there because sometimes we have difficulty grasping the truth. We forget. We get sidetracked from the truth. You know, I, I, I was telling somebody for service, they said, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing good. I said, I, I read a, a, an article in the news today about a young man who was a, a father and who was a, a, a veteran of the Navy who had gone exploring in, a, in, in some of the mines around where he lived and he had fallen into a mine and he was in the bottom of that mine for a number of hours and they knew from the cameras that he was alive and, and they were trying to get to him but the more they worked to get to him the more the mine collapsed in on him. It was over a hundred year old mine. It continued to collapse in around him and they were unable to save this man and they watched him go. I don't know about you, but I can say today, I, I'm not in that situation. The truth is, God has preserved me today, and I'm thankful. I am thankful. I, I pray for that family. The, the thought of that man laying in the bottom of that mine, unable to get to him, and now unable to bring his body out, and knowing that he's going to be entombed in that mine for the rest of time until Jesus comes and he's right with the Lord, then he'll be able to come out of that tomb. I, I would say I'm thankful because God has blessed me and I'm not in that circumstance. So my life is blessed. I don't have millions of dollars. I, I, there are things I can't buy, places I can't go, things I can't do. But I tell you, I have the blessing of the Lord because the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ is real in my heart today. The most important things in the world have everything to do with Jesus and nothing to do with everything else. Amen. The truth is that my joy is not in everything that I see and feel and taste and hear. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. The one thing that lasts, no matter whatever else takes place, the most consistent thing is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the truth. I'm blessed many ways, but I, I, I have had friends that have been close. I've had parents that have stuck close. I've had family that stuck close. I'm blessed in that. Some of you have felt like you were all alone, didn't have anybody or anything, but the one thing I can tell you the truth is that he sticks closer to